Welcome. Welcome everyone. We a wonderful time. We went yesterday to Ramakrishna Mission, Sardamat. We got divine experience there, really crowd. Vivekananda's birthday. And we all had uh, lots of beautiful prasad <laughs> and from Sardamat. And there is always a contest between Sardamat and Vivekananda Ramakrishna Mission. Whose prasad is better? We do that. They don't. But we always find Sardamat prasad, you can make out. That this is Sardamat's prasad. They are more tasty, you can feel more. And after all, ladies hand, Didi's hand and a man's hand cooking. <laughs> so we had a wonderful time uh, through the month of December, January, with the Holy Mother's birthday, we had Jesus Christ's birthday. And these things actually, these birthdays remind you of who we are, what is the purpose of this journey, what is this earth is all about, why are we here? And the more you discover and the more you dive into it, you suddenly start to realize how futile is this world. And what we call is, you know, you keep hearing that the world is like a dream. But you really don't understand it. How can the world be dream? This table is there. I'm watching the computer. How can it be? And that is what you realize that the ancient rishis of India Bharat, Bhav, Brahma Jyoti, and Ratha, they all discovered through deep meditation. Meditation is taking all around the world a great importance today. Billion dollar industry today in the Western world, that mindfulness meditation, which the Vedantic meditation and coupled with the Buddhist meditation, both put together, which we are practicing here. You start to realize that most of the people in the world today are diving outside, outside, outside. We are more interested in what we wear, what we eat, what, where we stay, how we live, our clothes, our body, and we spend so much of time. And when somebody says, how are you feeling? And you say, I got a little cold. I am not okay. But as you begin to realize that what you're talking about is your body, it is not you. And this, it is not you, is the alignment that is where we are in the confusion. We think this is me. This body is in me because we are so used to it and we have grown up. But the beautiful statement in the Vedanta, what is moving? and what is stationary cannot be one. Okay, what is the meaning of that thing? What is moving? We are moving. This body is moving. We were a baby the other day, and then we grew up, became a teenager, then we grew up as an adult, and we became middle-aged, and then, and the body is growing, growing, growing. Whereas I have remained when a baby I was I, youth also I was I, that was me, and that I, there is a beautiful story I remember, one lady, Christian lady, Christian nun actually, priest, walking down the New York, uh, Manhattan street, and she sees a beautiful fashion window and some dresses, that something made her look into it, really nuns won't look at it. Generally, they, if you notice, they walk with their eyes down. As per ancient Vedanta, you are supposed to walk with your eyes 10 to 12 feet ahead of you. <laughs> you are not supposed to look around like that. And this is what we do. We are looking there, looking there, looking there. They are supposed to. And ancient Vedanta talked about it. I actually practiced it for quite some time. Almost 10-15 years. I should have a look here and there. And I was in the midst of the airport. Of course, when I went, went to the aircraft, it was different, but normal life. 
you get into a different kind of a world, different kind of a thing. But this lady was looking into the, and naturally the glass windows are very shiny. And so in addition to the mannequin, which is there dressed up and all that, she saw her own reflection. And she's saying to her nun friend, who is also with her, she's saying, who is that? <laughs> She must be saying half choking, half serious. She who's that? So the other friend said, that is you. <laughs> when did I get old like that? This is what happened, you know? Moving, what is moving? You try, understand it this way. Suppose you're standing, you're stationary. And something is running past. Sometimes, let's say a child is running past. If you hold on to the child, you notice child and you cannot stay together. Either you have to move with the child or the child will stay stationary. In other words, moving has become not moving now. So moving and not moving cannot be together. That is body. What about the mind? Even worse, even right this morning if you look at it, how much of our mind has changed from absolute bliss, happiness, joy, to anger, jealousy, depression, worry, anxiety. It's changing, changing, changing. But I am remaining, I am the same. When I was angry, I was angry. When I was happy, I was happy. <laughs> so how can it be? Changing and not changing together. And this is what we took on. And this is what if you look, Swami Vivekananda, 12th of January, English calendar, as per, as per, he was born on Sankranti day, and the Tithi was Sankranti. So they celebrate Ramakrishna mission on the Tithi day, not on the English calendar day. Uh, whereas, let's say, Paramahansa Yogananda or many other birthdays are decided on the calendar day. But uh, Ramakrishna mission, they don't celebrate it as per the calendar day, as per the English calendar is calendar. That's okay. Worldwide, they celebrate 12th of January, many places. But generally, the word does get spread around. Or Paravam Shivananda's birthday is 5th of January. And this time, when you look at it, each one of them are trying to give us a message. And we are supposed to have got that message from the ancient rishis. But unfortunately, because of our education platform, which took on more on the technicalities, the curriculum driven, which was, look carefully, was originated by the Britishers. Before that, India itself had a different education. That was, we used to go to Gurukul, and from Vatsala we became Yuva, and there we became Brahmacharya, and then we took to, you know, Garhas, and after Garhat, Garhat used to come back, live like a family, and then we go to Banaprastha, and then take sannyas, and then sannyas to eventually. This is how. Reminds me of a, another beautiful Vedantic story. Husband and wife become nice and old, and they have reached now the Banaprastha state. So they have handed over everything to their sons and daughters and they decided to go on a pilgrimage and they didn't take anything excepting like it's supposed to be sannyas before sannyas brahmacharya the brahmacharya the vanaprastha time they took nothing and they were walking and they supposed to depend totally on god long time ago i met shankaracharya puri and when i asked him i asked i have this <laughs> always inquiring mind. I asked him, why did you become a sannyas? So he quit. I must say he was very tolerant, very nice, very smiling, very jovial, very modern. He smiled and he said, you would love to know, isn't it? I said, yes, sir. And then he explained. He said, I was just like you. <laughs> he said, I went to Germany. I did my engineering. I came back. And I was working in Coimbatore in a cloth industry as the number two and the number one was a German. 
German technology they were utilizing. You know, Coimbatore is very famous for making clothes and things like that. Till today, very famous, no? And you get lots of, lots of clothes with a very little money. There are special centers there. So Shankaracharya says, I got a message that there is a monk who's come and living with so and so who's an industrialist. So he said, let me go and meet him. So after the evening hours, I took a little off from my boss, went down to meet him. He said, if I knew what is going to happen to me, maybe I would not have gone. <laughs> he said, I went, I found there was nobody. So I asked the gatekeeper, the guard, where is the sannyasi? He said, he is in that hut. He went to the hut and he found, basically it must be rich man, so nobody cared or he did not open it up for everybody or maybe that day it was not open for everybody, something. As he goes, he found that uh, a monk, totally bare body, is lying down on the cot and resting on the cot, wooden cot, in a thatched house, not in the main bungalow. And a typical South Indian Coimbatore, you know, you'll find them white shirt, white pant, half sleeve shirt. This is what they love to wear. He is kneeling and weeping. You could see visibly he's weeping with his head down under the monk's feet. They politely waited, Shankarachari politely waited outside. After some time he goes inside when this man realized somebody else has come. So he got up and he came and said, you go inside. He was wiping his face. Shankaracharya goes inside and asks the monk, why was he crying? Shankaracharya is telling me this. <laughs> he said, that gentleman was standing at the door. The monk said, why don't you ask him? So he looked at smilingly at him and he said, you know all this? 15-20% of Coimbatore is owned by me. All this building, bungalow, land, property. But I'm in so much of suffering, so much of pain, worry, sickness. And I look at him, he's blissful, he's always happy, he's so joyful. So I was crying and telling, what is the secret? Tell me the secret. And this is what we are talking about today and this is what our masters have given. And he said, he, the monk, just talked for a while and gave me an apple and said, take it, this is your prasad. So he took the apple, he went home. He said, since I had missed out by, you know, Sandhya time, you're supposed to do the mala four times. He said, because I missed it, so I did it five times. And one was punishment to me for not doing it on time. And he said, after that, I ate the apple. And then he said, I don't know, something happened. And I realized, what am I doing here? If I have, to, I am working to be what? Like that boss. I want to become like that, no industrialist. Have lots of property, money. And he said, he is in suffering. And this man who has got nothing and he is in joy and happiness. So why can't I go directly there? Why do I have to go through this? He said, that's how I become a monk. And he took the same path. And these two old lady and the gentleman he took the path hi <laughs> Jai Guru. good to see you i was thinking you've forgotten the place. <laughs> <laughs> you remember dr good nature yeah lost a lot of good weight and you become taller <laughs> so shankaracharya says, why should I follow the normal path what everybody is doing it and pass through it, acquiring, acquiring wealth and money and property. I'm talking about Shankaracharya Puri. Happened to meet him. He said, I chose to leave everything. I took 5,000 rupees cash with me. I took two clothes, two suits, till, meaning, he says, I took two suits and I took my 
Dhoti Kutta, he's also South Indian. And he said two kamcha. You know, kamcha is that what we, after bathing, it's a cotton kind of a material which you use, not like the towel that we use westernized. And he said, I went to the railway station, I wrote down a, a little note for my MD, who was a German, that please forgive me, I have got this call, I am going. <laughs> Goes to the railway station, he asked the station master, give me the longest ticket. And the longest ticket didn't take him to Himalaya straight away, somewhere in between. I think somewhere in Uttaranchal, UP, somewhere. He said at the end of it, I got down, I started walking. And he said, I told God, from now on, I am not going to look after myself. It is your job now. He said, I had money, but I didn't buy any food. I had the clothes, he had a little, whatever, suitcase or I don't know how he carried it. He didn't talk about it. He said, there was a, I was walking, walking, walking. I was hungry, I was thirsty. But I said, no, God, you have to take care of me. And he found a tree, very interesting, and it's so honest of him. You could see that he's telling exactly as it happened to him. He said there was a tree, and generally in these villages you will find the tree has got a little cemented pavement area. So he said, I got up on that, it was quite a big thing. I laid down on it. I was tired, hungry, thirsty. I said, I'm going to go drink water, I'm not going to eat until I let you take care of it great resolution and he said something happened I must have flicked out must have been very tired or deep sleep he said certainly somebody was touching my feet and waking me up and I got up just like it happened to Buddha he said a very pretty lady and there was a horse's chariot and apparently there were two three people with her and she was there and some lady were carrying some fruit basket and something else and, and said, Sir, please take this glass of milk. He got up, he said, I was about to extend my hand because I was very thirsty. Very, I said, no, I will not. First he said, how did you come here? <laughs> he asked the lady. She said, I am the princess of this area. And she the last, it happened actually for two days, she was getting the message, go there and feed so and so. Divine Mother was coming into her dream. So she explained that, Sir, I got the message to come and... And if you read a little bit of Vivekananda, it happened many times. You know, it, it is, you are being taken care of, but you have to get connected. You know, it is like, if I ask you, is there BBC London here? Engineer, sir. Is there BBC London here right now? No, it is there. Only thing, you don't have the tuner. All you have to do is switch on the radio, tune it, whatever 93.3 or whatever it is. You just tune it in. It is there in this. Only thing you and I are ignorant about it. Somebody is asking Sarvapriyananda. If we are Brahman, we say, no, Aham Brahma. If we are Brahman, we are everything. This whole world is me. Then why do you have all days. Why can't I see Brahman? Very good question. Everybody would like to. Our children keep asking. I remember Swami Smarananda when he was doing a talk. You remember uh, what is his name? Who is in Netherlands right now? Uh, okay. Yeah, Abu. He, he asked, Sir, does God really exist? <laughs> all children, all of us would like to know, really exist? If he exists, why can't I see? So Sarvapriyananda asked him, yes, Brahman exists. And Brahman is none other than you. You have to have a mirror to see yourself. Even better understanding through scientific way. He says, see, today we are in quantum world, right? So in quantum world is what? Material. This is matter. What? What is it? What occupies space? Anything that occupies space is matter. You and I have read about it. He said, now see, supposing I bring it down, finer and finer and finer and finer. You come to molecule, you come to atom, you come to subatomic particle, electron, proton, neutron. We know about all that. He said, can you see electron, proton, neutron? And you bring it down further. 
you get subatomic particle to sub subatomic particle meson boson left right triad you can't see it either and if you break it down further what do we get you know now we get information and energy atom bomb and nuclear bomb and all this what is it fusion and fission what is it you get information and energy whether gold or diamond or iron you have information and there is a molecular atomic theory and there is energy he said where is the matter now the seraphirin is explaining he said you can't see brahman because brahman is also there but you have to tune up yourself like the bbc london to be able to see and where is it is none other than you and this is what we talk about tat tvam asi aham brahmasmi these are the mahavakyas we'll get on to it so mandakya upanishad we started off and we talked about the first on the last sunday and thursday little bit of touching upon little bit of what we talked about mandakya upanishad is the smallest of the upanishad most of you know there are 108 upanishad out of it the smallest only 12 mantras one a4 sheet can contain the whole upanishad and on which shankaracharya has written bhashya but bhashya is a technical term written on the comments on the upanishad and on his guru's guru garupada guru is govindapada and guru's guru is garupada garupada's guru was shukadeva but shukadeva is more or less a mythological story for you and me but garupada is very much is about 1400 to 1500 years ago shankaracharya is about 1400 and he has written on 12 mantras 250 karikas what is karika karika is like like mantras again like little little poems on each one of them imagine 12 mantra and it's so powerful it's strong totally concentrated and yet why did we start off we should have started from muktika upanishad or maybe mundaka upanishad why did we do mandakya upanishad why have we started it because none of us have time today no everybody is in electronic age we want everything fast <laughs> so i got the message let's start off with mandakya upanishad we have done this also before but it is a wonderful thing to do it again and again and again Imagine two hundred fifteen verses on just twelve mantras. There must be something. So it intrigued me intensely. Hanuman ji, Lord Hanuman, went to Sri Ram. Said, Lord, if I want realization in this life itself, what is it I have to do? Thanks. This is the latest one, <laughs> Mandakya Upanishad. Okay, the one which we are talking about earlier was the earlier one. Earlier one was issued somewhere around 1951 translation, and before that was about 1889, 1890, and this is 1951, and this is Nikhilananda, Swami Nikhilananda, who is translated. It's very nice, very beautiful. Schopenhauer he said you know uh, this upanishad was locked up in the himalaya the many rishis our saints and monks they talked about it and discussed with it but it stayed locked up there vivekananda is the first person he he became a modern British educated, but started studying Upanishad even before he met Paramahansa Ramakrishna. He was very interested, intrigued, and he kept studying. And he became a intensely great scholar. And he had a tremendous memory. Imagine, 
He had finished reading 11 of the 33, including the dictionary, Britannica. His disciple walking with him, Sharat Chandra, he walked into Velurman, said, Gurudev, if somebody can read all this encyclopedia, it will be so great, no? Vivekananda said, why do you say so? I have finished read, reading 11 of them. You can ask me any question from them. Sharachandra actually does that. He opens, first he opens the third volume. He opens some page and he asks a question from this is the thing. And Vivekananda tells him, this is the content including comma full stop, including going to refer to so and so encyclopedia and the meaning of which given in so and so one. He checks with him four encyclopedias. And then Sharat asks, how do you do it? He said, you can also do it. But the first principle is, like 56 out of 56 comes from where? We want what? Paradigm shift. What is paradigm? We want to change our lifestyle. We want no sickness, no disease, no aging, looking grand, handsome, beautiful, <laughs> pretty, no shortage of what? Anything, money, property, good relationship, perfect partner. We want all this. That's called paradigm shift. But the paradigm shift, there is a, why isn't everybody getting it then? If our ancient rishis are talking about it, it is there. It is with you. Upanishad tells affluence, English translation, affluence is no shot. What? Anything. Whatever you want. Sarvam kama. It is whatever you want. Kai Manavakya, you just think of it with your body, with your mind and with your word. It will instantly come to you. How? Why isn't it happening with everybody? Why? Because of the fine line. Sadhana Chatushta. Recollect? Sadhana Chatushta. Viveka. From where Vivekananda got his name. Vivekananda. Vairag. Detachment. Like the lotus flower. It's there in the samsara. You and I. It doesn't mean we have to leave the samsara and run up to the mountain and cave and live there. Vivekananda is saying, those who do that, they have missed the boat. And he said, those who plunge in headlong into the samsara, vanities of life, they too have missed the boat. So his disciples said, then what the way? Can't go to the mountain, can't live in the family. He said, no, no, no. Defy, he used the word defy, and then he explained, divinize your life. Defy, D-F-Y. Divinize, whatever you're doing. You know, we, if we got a toothache, you never forget you got a toothache. Throughout the day, you know I got a toothache. He said, just like that, divinize your life. Next week, I will touch upon prayers. There are many types of prayers. And he's saying what? Pray. For what? Purity. We know we are not pure. We are in the journey to become pure. Everybody is taking a journey. Even Bin Laden is taking a journey to become pure. Everybody will eventually. You and I have to establish that. Viveka Vairag and then Sadhana Chatushta. That Viveka 1, Vairag 2 and third is very cunningly hidden by the Rishis. Six of them in number three. Shama, controlling of our mind. Dhamma, controlling of our senses. Uparati, focus all that power together. And then Titiksha, don't give up. Hold on to it. And Shraddha, respect. Respectfully. If you're going to learn engineering, let's say design, and you have no faith in the professor, are you going to learn something? <laughs> you have no faith in the book, are you going to learn something? This is Shraddha, very important. You must respect. And then Samadhana. When you collect all this energy, focus it onto one point, and that's concentration. Notice Daniel Coleman today, a great emotional intelligence. He's talking about if you wish to win in your life, learn to focus, focus, focus. If you look at Ramakrishna Mission, their symbol has got a cobra around the symbol of a Raj Hums with the water. And the sun rising. Sun rising is the jnanam. Rajhams is the detachment. Why? Because Rajhams can sip 
milk out of milk and water mixed and leave the water behind as the mythology goes <laughs> and the snake snake is what the hood is focusing have you noticed when the snakes focus the rabbit the rat the frog they can't move anymore they get hypnotized he said that kind of a focus if you have then you will attain the fourth one so these are three vivek vairag sadhana chatushta is the number three uh, sa sadhana uh, shata sampatti sadhana chatushta is the four third one is shata sampatti six treasure and the fourth one is mumukshatta 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 i'm not going to give up intense desire for longing do that while being in the samsara be the best wife be the best husband be the best son best daughter best professional whatever you're doing have you realized you would love to have a friend who doesn't tell lies isn't it but how many adults do you know who don't tell lies or children whereas mandaka upanishad is saying satyameva jayate and you and i need to establish that truth in our life that is part of the sadhana chatushta purity so when you do that that the fine line you will attain sarvam kama everything will come to you happen to you just like that whatever you have give it to other people you didn't what about me i was talking about it so once one teacher said sir i have only 100 rupees how can i give them 100 rupees the beauty is upanishad is saying give it and see you know you remember uh, shatranj wal he is a muslim gentleman very devout muslim he is uh, such an inquirer he went to kedana to search we have another muslim gentleman with us he also went separately just to find out what is this all about hindu they're all kedana darshan ho gaya remember your badrinath darshan yeah. <laughs> <laughs> i have not forgotten you have also not forgotten now <laughs> we were going to where Norway or somewhere, no, on the way. Suddenly, sir rings up, and notice the moment, in, the moment you let go the agitation and you calm down yourself, you found everything. Unbelievable, no? This is what is the sarvam karma. They are saying, you calm down, focus yourself, and establish that ethical manifestation into your life. You will see, you will taste it, you will realize it. they will come to you they will happen hi good time thank you <laughs> come come please come so in this journey mandaka upanishad is telling us the and i forgot to tell you two things the hanuman ji asked ramachandran i want realization tell me the way hanuman ji is saying मांडक्य एकम इबालम मुमुक्षे विमुक्ते जस्ट वन अलोन मांडक्य द 12 मंत्र इफ यू जस्ट अंडरस्टैंड इट यू विल गेट लिबरेशन तो आई सेड देन व्हाई डोंट वी डू इट दिस इज व्हाई आई टुक ऑन दिस जर्नी आई सेड कम ऑन लेट्स डू इट आई एम एज मच अ फेलो ट्रैवलर एज यू आर तो व्हाई डोंट वी स्टार्ट इट एंड शोभना वर सेइंग यू नो दैट टाइम द उपनिषद were not there vivekananda started but way before vivekananda dara shiko recollect you talked about it before he was very fond of being a muslim but indian vedanta upanishad he started searching searching and he found mandakya upanishad and other upanishad and mandakya particularly he translated it he being a persian he got it translated into urdu and the persian language from there it went into urdu and then it was named persian language was named upanishad and it was taken to germany and the translated dry translation of that upanishad into latin which schopenhauer happened to read imagine schopenhauer reads it and he is saying solace of my life is opening khat as i am awake and it will be the solace of my life when i die 
and just say we are mukhi we don't know anything about our operation so you and i need to take up the journey that journey is what we are doing here right now and we are divinely blessed to get connected like that i was thinking of him in my meditation just not even last sunday it was after that and yesterday we happened to be see this is how things happen we need to respect that happening is all there upanishad is saying affluence affluence is no shock abundance of what everything 56 out of 56 it's affluent but how me 56 yeah yeah yes you have to believe in it you have to work with it you have to have the respect with it we have to train our children to say it is there or <laughs> they we know i'm a boy i'm a girl we know i'm so much age we know i have got this pain and that pain and i'm good in sports and i'm good in studies or i'm good in math i'm good in english that kind of a limited awareness whereas the upanishad in summary saying affluence abundantness unboundedness meaning no limit bounded is binding no this computer has got a binding limit what is unboundedness we collect our earlier session brahman what is brahman the meaning of brahman is vast not vast country not vast sky vast sky has a limit vast country has a limit vast america vast india vast china there is a limit the woman is just vast it is brahman infinite so what is upanishad saying affluence unboundedness is your natural state you are that <laughs> and what is the answer you have to just become aware of it you have to just be conscious of it and what is consciousness is brahman isn't it the so notice how beautifully it is linked up and today you look at let's say matrix film you know what it has been built on vedanta with the vedantic monks from the us the hollywood swami nikhilananda who is the writer of this book he is to uh guide which is a famous movie space movie interstellar huh star trek yeah star star trek star trek uh george forgetting two names they were both his disciple nikhil on the disciple and he used to get ideas from them and he converted it into star trek your harry potter If you look at the Harry Potter, the description of the Harry Potter, I'll touch upon this. How it is aligned with the it's fantastic understanding that the modern world is actually grabbing tiny, tiny bits of the Vedanta and enriching. Harry Potter has become so rich now. Is what the whole book has been written on that principle going around, and of course, the author has built on his own and imagination and things like that. So why aren't we all doing it? It is right there. It is like. you and i are thirsty we want to drink but we are in a we are in a desert we see a mirage and we race for the mirage but not shankaracharya is saying he is giving this example he is called his maruchika he says not one drop of that oasis water which is the mirage to you can wet one grain of sand entire water of that mirage cannot wet one grain of sand and we are racing for it and this is what is eluding eluding and it is going far and far and far and away vivekananda experience in rajasthan he wanted to see the desert he saying i was on the camel back along with a couple of devotees and all and they were traveling into it and he said i found i found one mirage and he said 
It was so beautiful. Good to see you. <laughs> and filled with water. And I was tempted to go and then Vivekananda, so he realized this is, this is the mirage. He said, I turn around my camel. Okay? He saw mirage. He was tempted to go for it, to drink, to see. And he took, may have taken a couple of steps, but he realized it is mirage. And he said, turn around my camel. And then, beautiful explanation. He said, I looked back. And this is a beautiful explanation in Vedanta it is given like a tiger. You know, when the tiger catches an animal and eats a little bit and he leaves it and goes. Have you noticed? Tigers, lions, they don't carry their, they, the hunt what they have killed. They eat a little bit, leave it there and go away. But the hyenas and jackal, they carry it, drag it to their home. And you and I like those little jackal, we are always grabbing. You remember when the COVID-19 started? How we were hoarding? <laughs> Everybody went and hooded, hooded, hooded. No, 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 no. My family must get it. But did anybody run short? No. And this is the message of the Vedanta. Is it is your natural state. You have to only become aware of it. How do I become aware of it? Give me a little bit of that Brahman. I would love to have it. <laughs> that is the journey that we are doing. Mandaka Upanishad is telling us this. Smallest Dhani Lanka, Bengali Dhani Lanka. Some of you may have seen it. It's so spicy. Just one bite of it, you add it. I made the mistake. <laughs> For two hours, it was in Hyderabad. It was not in Bengal. And somebody said, Sir, I brought this for you. I was commanding that time a fighter unit. And I had heard about Dhani Lanka and I said, Let me try. I was fond of eating chili. <laughs> I took it and I remember we were eating uh, Hyderabadi Kachi Biryani Bam. You know, Kachi Biryani. And I had it for two hours. We were eating curd and sugar and whatever something to take it out. That Dhani Lanka is Mandakya Upanishad. That's the power in it. So, talked about Shankaracharya, Gaurapada, talked about in 215 verses of only 12 mantra by Gaurapada. And mind you, on top of that, Govindapada is also written. That is Shankaracharya's Guru. And on that, Shankaracharya is written Bhashya. So all that put together is here. This is with Gaurapada's Karika as well as Shankaracharya's Bhashya and Nikhilananda is explaining. And it's a beautiful book. Those of you can grab hold of it. Otherwise, I have actually placed order. I have ordered for 15 of them. It is out of publication right now. It is not out of publication, meaning nobody is printing. It is out of print. Meaning the print was done, but it was sold out straight away. The people are waking up. Now notice, what is Mandukya Upanis is saying? Mandukya is very simply saying that, look, you have forgotten who you are. You say, who am I? Of course, I know who am I. What's the great mystery about it? I am this body, Robin Ghosh. I am my age is so and so. My appointment is so and so. My bank balance is so and so. I have a family. I have my children. My, I know who I am. Mandak is saying, no, you don't know who you are. Whatever you're doing right now, you're playing a role. Have you noticed heroes and heroines? They're acting. Film shooting is going on. And they're playing lovey-dovey role or whatever. And the moment film is shot, heroine must be sitting with her husband there and hero maybe with his wife. They've already gone that side. That was an acting that they're doing. And that acting is what you and I are doing and we have forgotten. So remind you of this anomaly. Shivananda, great monk, and he spread Vedanta all over the world. In America today, one of the most beautiful ashram you can ever see in your life. If you go to Shivananda Ashram in Florida, huge. Imagine from nothing, he had no money. And it is sporting today more than 600 devotees, they come and attend the session. You can see it in the Google and YouTube. Beautiful. 
wide open green ocean all around Florida. Now there in uh, Shivananda, when he was a monk in Rishikesh, he's got a big ashram there also. You all have heard about Chinmayananda. Chinmayananda. He's got a big Chinmayananda ashram. Chinmayananda has also got an Ivy school in South. I had met one of the monks who was principal in one of the Ivy workshops he had come. In a monk dress. So I was surprised. Started talking to him. I was always fond of them. <laughs> so he told me I'm from Chinmayananda. Chinmayananda was an investigative journalist. He used to go do research <coughs> and then write. He went to do investigation onto the monks of the Himalaya and on Vedantic teaching. He met Shivananda and he was learning from Shivananda. Long time. He renounced his family and all and he was working there, studying seriously. He didn't become a Brahmachari monk. He was studying that serious. Then he told Shivananda, Gurudev, I have this deepest desire to learn Upanishad and the Vedantic way of living life, but from a true monk, realized monk. Can you give me one name? The Shivananda knew all the great realized masters. He gave him one name. This story is very powerful and very important for us to understand. This Bandhaka Upanishad is going to take some time. Not one day, it will take few days to few times that we meet together. He gave him the name of Tapuvan Swami. Tapuvan Swami left his body around 104 years of age. He was living in Tapuvan. Tapuvan is not northeast of Gangotri Gomukhi. Tapuvan. About 14,000 feet and above. Freezing cold throughout the year. And if you go there, he used to live in a hut. And the, the Ganga water from the avalanche coming to Gangotri Gomukhi from there. So it was there, it, down there. And his hut was right above that. Anybody who goes to learn from him had strict principles. Just think of it. You have to make your own place to stay. Either in a cave or build your own hut. You have to organize your food yourself. And very little food there. There are no grihis to give Vikshan Dehi and say to me, give it to you, rice, dal, sugar. You have to make your own food arrangement. And you are allowed to eat only one time a day. And that is between 12 o'clock and 4 o'clock. Generally, it is 12 o'clock. And 4 o'clock, they take either, uh, if they have the opportunity in the monks, they say in Uttaranchal. In the plains, that is Uttarakashi and all, which is 5,000 feet. And Gangotri is about 10,000 feet. And this is 14,000 feet and above. But they say what? Kabhi mutti bhar ghana. Meaning the food somebody cooked specially for us. Filled with rich with ghee and things like that. Kabhi ghee ghana. Kabhi ghee ghana. Kabhi mutti bhar chana. <laughs> Sometimes only fish full of chana. That's my lunch for the day. Kabhi bobi mana. They are not allowed to beg more than five times or five homes or five people. If you don't get, you are not allowed to eat that day. You are supposed to fast. And today, you know, <laughs> if you go through, go through it. It is very interesting, all of you. Dr. Pradeep Jamnadas. Listen to him. 23 years of age, he became a top cardiac surgeon in England and subsequently he shifted to US. If you, if you Google it, miraculous benefit from water fasting. If you want, you give your uh, WhatsApp email with Shadha ma'am, I'll send it to you. If you just listen to it, what is he talking about? He said, live, do not eat. If you want to live good, healthy, and free from all sickness, disease. He's a cardiac surgeon. And he is taken today, he is in Florida. He is taken today by United States as an advisory committee for the whole country, and now obviously he is doing it for the world, to 
preventing medicine. What medicine? Fasting. And imagine India talked about it thousands of years ago. And today, since it is the Western scholar with a great degree, he's got all the cardiac surgeons, and he says, I'm treating at least 500 cardiac operations you know, per month. And he says, I asked myself, I operated on him, he became okay. Six months later, again, he comes back with the same problem. Why? He started to do, he said, imagine I'm a cardiac surgeon. Why should I talk to you about dieting? And he is not talking about dieting. He is not saying eat this much calorie, that much calorie. He says, pure water fasting. And he said, if you truly want to be benefited, you can start with, you know, miss one meal. Then start missing two meals. Have only one meal. And now when I'm listening to more of this stuff, especially, you'll be amazed. So many of them. They're all, and it's all there in the YouTube. You can listen to them. They're all talking about, don't eat. And you know what they say? Pradeep Jamnal is a famous statement. Two of them. I love two of them. One is, he says, eating is dangerous. <laughs> and we are all chasing for only eating, eating, eating. No, he said eating is dangerous. And another one, he says, imagine in the ancient time, prehistoric time, we were what? Paleothelic human being. So we used to go out in the morning, came out of the cave, and the whole of us, we would chase a deer or something like that, a bison, kill it and eat it. And he said it was very difficult to kill them. And you will eat one time. And that time he said, you feast. Eat as much as you want. After that he said, nobody was that strong and good to every three, four hours you go ahead and kill something and again have a snack. <laughs> he said, eat only one time a day. And then evening comes in, you better retreat, otherwise somebody else will eat you up. So you go into your cave and you live in your cave. And come down next day, meaning 24 hours fasting, one time eating. So his famous statement number two, other than eating is dangerous, he said, human beings are meant to fast and meant to feast, to F. That will give you what? He said, fighting skill and freedom <laughs> for it. Beautiful. And if you listen to it, so now notice, India talked about fasting. So now, going into the Mandukya. Mandukya is talking about realize who you truly are. And how do you do that? Okay, I want to realize, all right, tell me about it. How do I do it? He said, see, in most religion, if you look at it, all the religions, they're talking about what? Is the message of what? Message of all religion. You are the ultimate reality today, excepting for one or two religions. They don't talk about it. All theistic religion is saying what? God is supreme. God is ultimate. God is up in the heaven, right? In the church, in the mosque, in the temple. God is who? Theistic religion. Someone else than you. You are small. You are fragile. You got hardly any power. God is infinite. God can do anything. Divine Mother says, Tatastu, Chal ho jayega. And you get everything. This is how theistic religion says. In other words, you have to pray to God and you have to worship God and you have to light Diya and Agarbatti. And as you do it, and you're in a late now, you're running up and you suddenly say, Oh, 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 I forgot to light the candle and the Diya for. Kali Mata, she will get angry with me. You go back and you light for Hanumanji and Kali Mata now. This is how we are, our religion grows, more or less. Everybody is passing through this state. He says, no, realize yourself. How do you do that? We become in the same. If God really exists, why can't I see him? God exists everywhere. Why can't I see God in this clock? Yes, you should, and you can, and you will, as you understanding through the Mandukya. If God exists and I am Brahman, why can't I taste Brahman? I should be able to feel him, natural. Why not? 
Yes, it is true. And you will. And this is what his mandak is all about. He's saying, not through faith. You know, the name of religion in most of the country is faith, particularly Western religion. They will say, what's your faith? <laughs> what religion are you practicing? In Vedanta, it is not faith. And this is what Vivekananda, he brought. And this is why we have this book. If you're interested, Shadavan will come and bring it called American Veda. It's what American Veda and Philip Goldberg is writing two books. One is Paramahansa Yogananda, which and American Veda. What is American Veda? Veda is wisdom, knowledge. And American is the American. You'll be surprised. American Veda, Philip Goldberg, American author writing and saying that that wisdom came 1893, 11 September from Swami Vivekananda. He's the first guru who gave birth to yoga and then 24 years later Paramahamsa Yogananda and all these, you know, uh, lots of yogis who went down including Mahesh Yogi and you know, today Ravi Shankar and Deepak Chopra and everybody, they all went down to the west, 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 everybody. This yoga is, we say, union. Union with who? Union with the mind, body, prana. This is what the Patanjali Yoga Sutra says. But the Vedanta doesn't say that. Vedanta says union is with you, with your own self. Remember a little while ago I was talking before you all came. Something which is moving and something which is stationary cannot be one. Basic principle. Something which is running. Your son is running path. You want to hold on to him. If you hold on to him, either he will have to follow him or he will stand still. Meaning, something which is moving has to stand still. Something which is stationary has to move. Then only you can be together. You cannot be stationary and this is given by a famous saying. It is called Swargashram. 104 years of age, he left his body. He, he used this term. He coined it. This is his coin. And he says, what is this moving, moving? You look at our body. We were a little day baby. A little before that, after that, we were like him. A little after that, we will be like, <laughs> like Tarush and all. A little after that, we will be like you, sir. And a little after that, we will be like, you know, young adults, like all of you. Little after that, we'll be middle aged. Little after that, we'll be old. And little after that, we are in the dying age. So what is it? Body is changing, changing, changing. It's moving, moving, moving. Whereas I have remained. I was there in that baby. At first, me. You show the picture. I said, I can't. It can't be. Really, sir? Ask my mother. That was me. And that me remained youth and adult and changing, changing, changing. Mind, even faster. From morning till now, how much the mind has changed. No? And you say, that's my mind. I'm like that. <coughs> I don't like that guy. <laughs> you get the point? The moving mind, moving body cannot be I. I is something else. And this is what Mandaki is talking about. Giving four Mahavakyas. There, there are more Mahavakyas. So from the Mahavakyas, we go to Chandagya Upanishad, Samaveda. He's talking about Tat Asi. You remember Nikaragama Swami? I am that. Bombay. In Dharavi, such a slum. From there he became a Brahma Gyani. And when he was attaining almost Brahma Gyani, he said, let me go off to Himalaya and I'll do practices. He left Dharabi halfway through as he started. He suddenly said, where am I going? I am Brahman. Everything is Brahman. Why am I have to go away? I can be here in Dharabi itself. And he continued. He is Ashrama. Those of you see, quite a few of our devotees have gone there. Very simple little hut in the Dharabi slum. And a lot of people are writing about him. He he was asked by one of the Western devotees, Sir, we worship you. You are a Brahma Gyani. <laughs> and he said, Why are you insulting me? He said, Sir, I'm not insulting, I'm praising you. You're a Brahma Gyani. He 
that I'm not Brahma Gyani, I am Brahman. <laughs> That's the realization that you and I have to proceed towards. Second, Vriyadharanak Kupanishad, you've heard about it again and again. Aham Brahmasmi, Ajur Veda. Then comes Pragnana Brahman. This universe is nothing else but the consciousness. You realize you are using that consciousness all the time and experiencing everything. Experiencing everything. Learning everything. Eating, having fun, joy, put together, or suffering, or sickness, or disease, or pain, or loss, or gain. Unless you are conscious, you cannot, you cannot do that when you are unconscious or in coma. It has to come to you through the consciousness. And that consciousness is saying, Prajnana Brahman. And that is Aitari Upanishad. Aham Brahmasmi is Vriyadharaka Upanishad. And from Aitari Upanishad is Prajnana Brahman, Rig Veda. And I am Atman Brahman, which is from the fourth. Fourth one is going ahead and talking about from the Atharva Veda, Mandakya Upanishad, which is this Upanishad. From there is I am Atman Brahman. The ultimate reality is eventually you and who is talking about religion. All religion is trying to tell you that. So now, all right, it's good. Now how do I go about it? What are you and I? We are that reality. Basic teaching of the Upanishad is there is one ultimate reality. And that ultimate reality is unchanging which itself has manifested into various. How is it to understand it? How do we do that? This is what is the journey. And this world that we are experiencing and all the manifestations in that reality, whether the plant, the animal, the rock, the mountain, the dolphin, the dog, you, me, men, women, boys, girls, everything is manifestation of that one reality. Why do we not perceive it? There's I was telling you that Chinmananda Swami, he went to learn from um, the Tapuvan Swami. So there is Purnananda Swami who was his Brahmachari then. He remembers he is still there in that same hut. And right now, Purnananda Swami recollects and he is talking about that I remember when Chinmananda came and Chinmananda Swami was taken and he started attending stiff, stiff conditions of learning. He started living there. One day he asked Tapuvan Swami, Sir, if you know Mandakya Upanishad is saying, experience this universe, experience God. This Sikh religion says, you will realize God when you die, when you go to heaven. Guru is safe. I can't come and catch him now. I have not met. I am in heaven right now. I don't see God. Or I am in, I am dead. I can't see God. What is this? Where is God now? I can't catch him. Vedanta saying, no, right now. With Vivekananda is explaining. This is why it's so powerful for us. It is reality. Right now, I will show you God in this clock. I'll show you God in that glass of water. Reminding about the water. The incident happened. Chirmananda asked, Tapuvan Swami. So, if this universe is, what is Mandaka say? Four states. All four states called Sadhana Chatushta is you. What is that? Jagra. We are all awakened. Hopefully. <laughs> Second, Swapna, dream sleep. It's called Taijasa, energy. And Jagrat is called Vishwa. And then deep sleep. There are three states all of us are experiencing. Everybody is experiencing, baby is experiencing, grown ups are experiencing. We are awakened, we learn, do things, enjoy the world, and then go up to dream sleep state. And from there we are enjoying dream. And notice now, we are not using this body, we are not using this mind. Another body comes up, another mind comes up. Body is in the bed. Mind is in the bed. This is 
the conjuring of the mind creates that dream and notice something what happens in the dream let's say I see I got a Ferrari car and I'm driving it when I get up I don't say where am I going to park my car if I have one billion dollars in the dream I don't get up and check my bank balance if I've killed somebody I don't have to get to the jail and be punished or hanged what happens in the dream you've experienced it you may remember some of it you may not remember it but it has got no link with your the so-called this reality world that is sapna and then come deep sleep in the deep sleep your mind goes off to sleep totally zero mind zero thoughts you don't remember anything you've gone up to sleep but when you wake up deep sleep to when you wake up you say I had a wonderful sleep how do you know that if your mind was not there your consciousness was there the consciousness the chaturtham called Turiya was there in the deep sleep in the dream sleep and in the awakened state all three are nothing else but the seed which is called the chaturtham Turiyam Turiya means Chaturtam. What does it mean? Let me give you a simple example. And then I come back to the one Swami. I take a seed, an apple seed. Apple seed is like the deep sleep. It has got all the potential of an apple tree, of the fruit, of the plants, of the roots. But can you see them in that seed? You can't see it. You can only see it when you have taken care, when it it is, you know planted on the right well-prepared manure water sunshine air then the seed will germinate and then you can see root then you can see leaves then you can see the plant and then it growing up age and then the fruits and then you can enjoy the apple so this that seed state is the thurium is the chaturtham is what consciousness chaitana Chaitanya, which is the seed form for the deep sleep, seed form for the dream sleep, seed form for the weakened state. In other words, whatever we are doing is nothing else but is that consciousness. In a body, in a form which is different. We have different body, different mind, different name, different function, different form. Nama, Rupa, Babuhara, they are all different. But consciousness is one. For who? For everyone. And this is what in the Mandakya Upanishad, when you study and understand, you will see suddenly, my husband, my wife is not different from me. It's the same consciousness with a different body name and form. And this is why when I was calling Sharadama Durga Mata, everybody was laughing at me. <laughs> I would say, you all understand that this is what Vedanta talked about, Vivekananda brought in. That our country went down to the dogs for two reasons. One is we started not respecting our woman. And yet we worship our mother as Durga Mata, Kali Mata, Vaishnava Mata, Sarasati Mata. We call all the matas, but the actual the the woman of the country where you know if you look at 16th, 17th, 18th century, very badly, not only in India all over the world and if you remember 16th 17th century the american woman went in for a revolution for this and that's how their thing advanced in our india it started off much later 1850 19th century i remember once one uh, the widow marriage was started off by isha chandra vidyasagar so somebody there were a lot of conflict everybody was saying no 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 they should not be allowed what marriage you'll be amazed to hear holy mother sharada She's supposed to be the Saraswati incarnate. She wanted to read. She was not allowed to read. So she took one little book of alphabet and all learning to read. Her nephew comes in and says, who is allowed you to read? He takes the book and tears it up and throws it up. Gargi, Maitri, I talked to you all about Bach, 
Devi, Rig Veda's time. She was more powerful than any rishis at that time. And she says, I am the Durga, I am the Kali, I am the Brahman. She was a Brahmagyani. She tells in that Bhaktivi, if you, you know, those of you who have some knowledge about Durga Pal that time, the Sotram which goes off is from Bhaktivi Sotram. And she's saying, I am the one who resides in you. Telling who? You'll be shocked. Indra, Varura, Agni. <laughs> There's a beautiful story goes on. Indra, I'm mighty and powerful. Varuna, strong, Agni, Vayu, Pavan, Deta. So, Rishika Bak, she was called Rishika. And her father's name was Gammini. Rishi Gammini. Rishika Bak says, okay, you all say, you all are, talking to all the gods, you all are saying, you all are very powerful. Can you remove this puts a little straw, little blade of grass on to the floor. Can you remove it with your power? So the gods all laughed and Indra signaled to Varuna, you know, the god of water. He comes and he tried with everything, including tornado and hurricane, whatever it is supposed to be. Tsunami wave, nothing happened. The stay safe. He puts his head down, goes back. Pavan Devta comes in. Pavan Devta. He tries everything, huffs and puffs, straw stays there. Then can be fire god. <laughs> and he comes and tries to, he says, I am the Agni Devita, I can burn anything in this universe. She said, burn it? Couldn't do it. They all go back. And they're saying, who is she? Then Indra Devita comes. As Indra Devita comes, she doesn't continue with that. She reveals herself. This is the woman's power. So Vivekananda is saying, India went down because of one is we did not worship our woman anymore. And number two is we forgot our downtrodden poor and those who need our support and help. You know, we kind of ignored them. And this is how that four, you know, Shudra and uh, the Vyasha and then comes in the Kshatriya and the Brahmin system came in. You know, the business community, the poor. That eventually got obliterated. So here, Tapuvan Moni was asked, but if we are this chakra, we are this Sapna, we are the deep sleep, why can't I experience Brahman? One, and two is, what is the requirement of all this? We should always just be consciousness and continue to live with the consciousness as Brahman. Why is all this required? Tapuvan Muni didn't answer. The disciple has asked, he can't keep on poking. These conditions were very strict. Tapuvan Muni used to take two classes a day, one morning and one in the afternoon. What he taught in morning, those days, everything is Shruti in, you know, you have to listen to it and repeat it. In the afternoon class, if you miss one line, then you are banished for life. You are never allowed to come back. So you have to be that awakened there, that focus, that conscious. So, he says, next day morning, uh, as we walked in and as the class was going on, suddenly Tapuvan Muni is asked him, Chinmananda Swami, he was then a Brahmachari, bring some water to drink. Now, he never did that before. Chinmananda Swami was really surprised. He he's disturbing the class, he wants water to drink. Anyway, he can't ask too many questions. So he gets up quickly, he takes a Lota and a glass, then he goes down. You have to go down and get the water. He brings it up and comes in. As he enters the hut, Tapuvan Muni is very angry. He said, what have you done? What did I tell you? Chimananda is perplexed. He didn't understand. He said, sir, you wanted water. He said, yes, what have you brought? 
I want water. Is this water? Sir, it is a glass filled with water. So did I tell you to bring glass? And instantly Chinmananda says, I realize my question, the answer was all this. You cannot realize this universe, experience it, until and unless you have form, function, name, Nama Rupa Bhavara. So this whole universe is otherwise, is literally nothing till you start experiencing it. Another beautiful story by, I have it on my ebook in Kindle, it's Alan Watt, around 1955-1960. He wrote this book. Name of the book is very simple to remember. Quite expensive, by the way. <laughs> the book. Name of the book is The Book. In which he is saying, it is meant for children, but the profound message is for you and me. He says, long, long ago, God, as you know, God himself was there all alone. I alone existed, no? You hear that. And he got bored. What is Brahman? Brahman is Sat, Chit, Ananda. Sat is existence, Chit is consciousness, Ananda. The, all these three is one which is Brahman. The, he was Sat, existence. You know, like this computer. Not computer existing. Existence is the computer. These are Vedanta tells you to understand. I am not existing. My house is not existing. The existence is my house. The existence is in me. Ocean of existence has converted itself Vedantic learning. So then you will easily say, you are not well? He said, no, 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 no. I am okay. I am perfectly okay. My body is not well. <laughs> so you discriminate, start to differentiate. So, Alan Watts says, the God got bored. He wanted to play and have fun. So God, being God, is very smart, very big, very good, very intelligent. So what did he do? Beautiful story. He created not God. God created not God. There are only two things at that time. One, one alone existed, which was God. Now God created not God. So now not God and God, they started playing with each other. Who is not God? Not God is none other than God. God himself has created that not God. Not God is actually God. But God being so good, Alan Watt is writing so beautifully, he says, God being so good, he makes so perfect everything, he made not God so good not God, that not God forgot that he is God. And he's saying that not God is you. You are playing and you are now doing what? Searching, Mandaku Upanishad, studying Vedanta, searching for God. See, that is what is the Mahavakya is saying. Tat Tomasi, Aham Brahmasmi, Prajnana Brahman, Ayavatman Brahman. It is all saying the same thing. Mandaka goes ahead and says, experience that. Okay, how do I experience it? How do I go about it? Swami Vivekananda told, the goal of our human life is to manifest the divinity in our life. What is education? He said, go to school, college, learn. No? get some degree. Why? Have you ever realized? Why do we send children to school? To learn. Why? So that they get good marks, get good admission. Where? Good college. Why? So that you'll get a good degree. Why? So that you'll get a good job. Good doctor, good engineer, good professor, good teacher, good businessman, good IT. No? Why? So that you'll have Good money. And then you request CA <laughs> to manage your money. And then what? Have a good life and have a good partner. This is what we think. That this is what is life is all about. He said, now manifest that divinity which is within you. It's the journey that we all are divinely blessed that we are talking about Vedanta. We are trying to understand Vedanta. And it says very powerfully in Vedanta a long time ago, unless you have done something great in your life, you cannot sit for Vedanta. Yes, ma'am. Uh, I 
have a question. I uh, know it's related to this topic. Yesterday we uh, watched one uh, series. Uh, in that series, uh, uh, two kids, two children is dead. Um, look, accident happened and they dead. Say that again. Uh, can you please Yesterday? No, no, just you tell Sh Sharada and tell me. Ma'am, she saw some movie yesterday. Two children, because for accident, they died. Sorry? Yeah. Two children met with an accident and died. Yeah. Okay. Uh, they are only the children. They, mm -hmm. they are only two children. Right. Both died. Meaning they both children belong to one family. Yeah. Okay. They are only two children. Right. They both died. Right. So after that, they found out some which guy is behind that. And said th they tried to fight with that person. So uh, after 25 years, they get the justice. And the rich guy went uh, six months only jail. It's like an old story, nothing much. But I try to, when I watch that series, I try to connect that series with Vedanta. How I am trying, I feeling the pain of the parents who are trying to justice for the kids. Like 25 years, they are going for that. So I, I asked uh, him, if uh, that situation, it is reality actually. It is going on in our Slowly, society. slowly, slowly. You asked Sachin. That? <laughs> Actually, I'm shaking. Can you please help me? <laughs> no, no, like, try, try, try. You're doing very good. Okay. So, like, you know, in the, in the reality, we can see some crime is happening. So, that person who is the victim, like, who, who, that parents, how they survive their life. Like, they are fighting with justice. They are mm. fight, Like, so how we connect with that Vedanta, like. Okay. Good question. Would you like to add on something which I have not understood? Ma'am, she asked me, I came through Vedanta. Uh, how such kind you of understand parents, that? Yeah. Such kind of parents, they can <clears throat> go through, the, through and they can have a patient and tolerate, if I'm not wrong. Uh, they have patience, they have tolerance. That's why they fight for 25 years, they are fighting, they are asking for justice. They get the justice. But I, I feel uh, like uh, we are helpless, like we have to wait for justice 25 years, we can't do something. Yeah, okay. I, I think I've understood it. In case I have not answered your question, please ask me again. Actually, I'm also not sure about my question, but I just see the pain of the parents and I feel like where is the, like I don't know actually. Yeah, so understand it, it's, it's a very big question and this is what everybody is suffering from. But understand it, it's very simply explainable. Who's experiencing it? You say the father and the mother. Let's say I'm experiencing it, okay? My two sons are dead. Who is this I? In this case, it is my mind. And the mind is not I. And mind is influencing the body, which has stopped eating and which is suffering and crying and in terrible pain and howling and crying and things of that, right? Which is experiencing that? The body. The mind and the body is not I. Now, understand this from another angle. Vedanta says that your suffering, your joy is not you. How to understand that? You look at how many sufferings we have had in our life till today, at wherever we are standing, are they still sticking to us? No, they've gone away. I remember I was then 14 years of age. My father and I, we were literally inseparable. We were five brothers and sister. And everybody says, in fact, including my mother, she's howling and crying. Father's dead body is lying there right in front of us. And mommy is saying in Bengali, Tera kya hoga? What will happen to me? I, I remember next, I said I will stop studying. I am going up to Himalayas. And I that particular two, three days, four days, we were staying in a double story building, Shahad and I have gone and seen that. I was going from straight through the house. Go down the staircase, coming up the staircase, go down, you know, through the garden. I was doing this continuously, day in and day out. I wouldn't stop. People are trying to stop me. How much pain, so-called, my body, my mind was in. 
Am I in that pain now? No. Why? Because Vedanta says no suffering is yours. You are absolutely free. And a beautiful statement Swami Sarvapriyananda uses it. He says, you are super Teflon. Nothing sticks to you. Who is you? You, that Paramatma, Baham Brahmasmi. You are super Teflon. You know, Teflon, you do cooking, it doesn't stick, non-stick. He said, nothing sticks to you. Temporarily it does. But you look at it now today. We have been through so much of pain and suffering, so many losses, so many times. Dr. Gundecha will tell you how much of a tough time he went through about seven years back, eight years back. Right, sir? But at that time, he held on and he, he didn't lie down. He had that titiksha, I will not give up. And he is today doing something. Yesterday I happened to meet him. And the moment he said, I said, are you in Bangalore? He said, no, no, I'm in Mumbai. And the moment he said it, I got a message. That's his ultimate journey. Though after this, he's doing one more. But this is something beautiful. He's been there a long time and he's very peaceful, happy. Am I correct? I didn't have any professional discussion with him. Is it correct? You're feeling very good about it, no? That current job. How? It never sticks to you. What sticks to what? The mind. And the mind and the body. You notice it is changing, changing, changing. Whatever amount of grief we have had. Uh, yeah? It is not, I'm thinking about the only parents' grief. It is like a society, culture, our um, court system, judging system. I don't have any experience in life. I'm just going to the series. So I feel, we are feel helpless. We can't help them. No. Here, you reflect to our earlier discussion on this, is, you remember, uh, we talked about karma phala? Yeah. Whatever we do, we enjoy or we suffer, mm -hmm. it's because of our karma phala. Now, whatever the mother and the father has earned, because of their karma phala, and also the children, the babies, Whatever their karma fala, it has to come to life. So let me give you, yeah. Like I know this person is wrong. He did the thing. Like he is a chore. I know that, but I am not able to prove that. So it I'm is, it is, it is. Uh, I'll give you another story. With that story, I've I'm talked sorry about. Sorry if I'm giving so much trouble huh? to you. Sorry. I'm sorry if I'm giving trouble. To no, no, no. You. It is all sticking to the same thing. And remember one thing. You're not asking the question. You say I am asking. No, <laughs> it's coming through your vocal cord, through that mind. But it's not you. If the divine mother is asking through you, and I am not speaking either. If the Divine Mother or Guru is speaking through me, I am nobody. I am just a monkey delivery guy. Amazon.com delivery guy. So, what is it? Our journey will comprise of all this suffering and enjoyment. This is what is samsara. Bhagavad Gita, Krishna is telling Arjuna, samsara dukkha sarvasara. So, why should I do all this? So, let me tell you. One quick outline, Bhagavad Gita, Arjuna, what's he saying? I don't want to fight, I want to kill my Gurudev, Vishwa Pitabaha, my Gurudev, Dronacharya. Why should I kill them? They're my brothers, my, I don't want to fight with them. And Krishna is telling, and the same thing, now you reflect, I don't want to go on with that, all of you know that story. But I'll tell you one which you may not know, I've talked about it, Janak Maharshi, before he became Maharshi. This story is very famous among the monks. Janak Maharshi, his uh, guru was Ashtavakra. A famous Ashtavakra Gita is because of Janak Maharshi. The Janak Maharshi, he was sleeping and suddenly the god comes and says, Maharaj, Maharaj, wake up, wake up. Enemies have attacked. Come quickly, fight. Janak Maharshi says, quickly get my soldiers and you know the leaders of the warriors and everybody else and let's, and he puts on his dresses and warriors dress and swords and banners and goes and fights. He fights, the fight was tremendous and Janak Maharshi lost. And he was dragged on the ground 
to the new now emperor and he said since you are from noble birth i will not kill you but i am taking all your kingdom everything all your property your family everything is mine now now you are to leave this country immediately and if anybody tries to give you even a glass of water they will be punished imagine janak bashi emperor suddenly what suffering he is walking alone he can't drink water he doesn't get any food to eat and he has to walk apparently his kingdom was not very big because he walked for two days and he crossed it as per the story he crossed it after two days without water without drinking totally tired and emperor after all must be little softened up he goes on to the other side and he sees you know they they have this uh, in uttaranchal they have handi they they give you food to the poor people so there was somebody was giving it you know the big queue janak marshi also goes and stands on the queue and eventually when his time come and that guy who was to give it he said khalas finished this is what they do in arab <laughs> khalas been finished janak marshi so sad he is going to burst into tears when that man looking at his face he said you are from good blood okay let me see he scrapes the bottom some gruel he picks it up in a uh, in one of those leaf uh, patram in which he gives it to him and he said he said take it janak varshi with a trembling hand takes it imagine his suffering related with your question he takes it with a trembling hand and goes to sit down under the tree to eat it as he goes a kite comes and swoops on his head and the food falls onto the dust and now janak marshi why me why me why me and he rolls on the ground and crying 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 suddenly god said maharaj aapne bulaya and he wakes up he sees he is in that palace he is sleeping in his bed he was dreaming but he is a great philosopher he is not like you and me you and me will say oh it was only a dream he is not you and me he is a great philosopher and wished astavakra he is about to be enlightened he asked this question ye sach wo sach is this the truth or that is the truth <laughs> the god said sir what are you saying the god goes running queen queen comes in what has happened to the old man and he said is what is it what do you want what is it he just says yes such wo oh, such the queen calls the raj vaid vaid comes in maharaj anything painting anything something what has happened tell me i'll give you something he looks at him dazedly and says yes such wo oh, such imagine that scene what pain is he in right now he doesn't know which is the truth is this waking moment truth or the dream sleep was the truth now he goes on kingdom has come to its halt anybody comes in bharat in next day morning brief big meeting going on mahasabha mantri is bringing sir you have to sign here put your stamp he says yes such who oh, such he is not doing anything whole country is come to the word has gone around the market place is everywhere king has gone mad ashtavakra hears it he said okay i will go and meet him he come ashtavakra being ashtavakra he knows everything what is happening he comes and he says maharaj how are you what is happening maharaj says yes such oh such then ashtavakra knows everything he says maharaj understand it this way now He says, "When you were rolling on the ground, you had no food. Your food was tattered. When you there, he said, 'Yes, I was there. I was the one suffering.' He said, 'Now you are sitting in the palace with all the queen and the emperor and everybody else and the kings all around you. Are you here?' He said, 'Yes, I am here.'" Dashta Vakra says that I am cutting down the hole. It's a very big story. It goes on for about four hours. <laughs> He says, "Maraj, now, who such, 
ना ये सच नॉट दैट ट्रूथ नॉट दिस इज द ट्रूथ नीदर दैट इज ट्रूथ नॉट दिस इज ट्रूथ तो महाराजा इज नाउ गुरु आफ्टर ऑल इज स्लाइटली डिफरेंट दैन द अर्लियर डेज पर्सन ही लुक्स एट गुरु एंड से दैट मीन्स नथिंग इज सच नीदर दैट इज ट्रू नॉट दिस इज ट्रू एंड अष्टावक्र से नो तुम ही सच only you are the truth only thing you don't know who is the truth so what you and i suffering today is what bhagavad gita and upanishad and mandaka upanishad are telling us experience through the waking dreaming being deep sleep the fourth which is you and the moment to do that chidananda prapti no suffering and he says end of all suffering that manifestation of the divinity we just don't know about it this is mandak is talking about we have forgotten about it so when you are seeing somebody suffering either the urchin boy on the road or something what is yours and my job is to heal help everyone to rise above it to know and how do you heal a crying mother buddha's very famous story my mother mother didn't have baby mother and father prayed and after lot of efforts and all they got a baby 12 years the baby grew up with the mother mother naturally totally attached how old 70 years old mother 78 was the father actually happened then these one day that boy playing with the friend one snake comes and bites him and he dies imagine the mother's grief mother holding on to him and not possible you cannot die and going on two days three days what is thinking smelling everybody saying so do something get the body out we have to do the rituals burn the body mother is not letting go then somebody told him okay Buddha is there in Sarnath. You go to him. Only he can heal you. So she carries the baby in her hand, twelve years old, all the way to Buddha, and goes and puts him down in front of Buddha. Buddha was apparently there, and says, "You are the enlightened one. Make him alive." Buddha looks at her, looks at the baby, and says, "I will. One condition. I need something." Is it okay? He said, "I just want a fistful of mustard seed." He said, "No problem. I'll just get it." He said, "No, no, no. You have to get the mustard seed not from a shop. I don't know what they call those shows. Shop must be Bunya still." He said, "You get it from a home where there has been no death." She goes around from one village to other village to other village, and eventually, after two days, three days, comes back. dog tired must be not have eaten out of the grief and falls down in front of buddha and then buddha explains to her she becomes one of the great bhikshuni so what is it realization this is called awareness of who we really are this is what this book is about and mandakya is going ahead in doing two investigation first 12 mantra first mantra is on omkar we'll do a little bit of meditation on the omkar again today and the second one is the second investigation is what is this true self who am i you notice yes ma'am uh, why we are always changing why can't we be the same all the time why are we changing yeah Answer to that question. If you have listened to that story of Chinmayan and the Tapovan Swami, yeah. to experience this world, which is when you understand the Mandaka, as we go along, you will see who's you and I is the consciousness, is the Brahman. But Brahman has no power. Brahman cannot do anything. What creates this universe, this world, is the Maya. the brahman with maya is called hiranyagarbha or this universe this is what 
Arjuna saw in Krishna when Krishna was asked by Arjuna, I've heard all this, but can you show me your true form? And Krishna took his true form called Virat. That was so much nerve shaking that Arjuna was frightened. That form and this Arjuna's form cannot mingle together. So for you and I to experience this world, that's why God created, not God. Understand or link up all this. To do what? To manifest this so-called reality, which is, doesn't exist. Give you a simple example for you to understand. It's very tricky to understand, but not complicated. Two examples, light, sunlight. This sunlight is falling dirty something on the road. Does it get dirty? No. That sunlight is falling on holy water, Ganga. Does it become holy? No. It falling on a pitcher of wine, maybe lying in my fridge. Does it become drunk? No. The sunlight is ever detached. You and I are ever detached. Okay. This is the, the understanding that the reality of this world is not this what you think. That is why I call that. That is the Supreme Brahman. So when you start to realize that and realize that I'm passing through this, this is I'm using like an app. If your app becomes a virus or whatever, what do you do? You restart the computer and you put virus infected something. What is virus infection treating? Antivirus is Marnikur condition. <laughs> You're treating it now and treating it to say realize this world is being experienced by us, by our five senses. You will come to know in the next session. We have 19 mouths. We have seven cells. You say, no, 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 I've got only one mouth. No. And you'll be surprised, this whole universe, the God consciousness called Hiranakashipu and us, we are actually apparently two different, but we are not different, we are one. Another example, take a TV screen. TV screen, is the consciousness it is playing the role whether uh, King Kong coming and breaking Eiffel Tower or there's a love scene going on or a sports car or a hero chasing villain everything is happening is the TV screen bothered no another TV screen is not affected whether the movie is running or not running but TV screen is always there Consciousness is always there. Another example, you all love to wear gold ornaments, tiara, bangle, necklace, paijip, right? Paijip cannot say I am paijip. That necklace is richer and bigger, but I am better than that toe ring. <laughs> this is what who's change comparing the form. You and I do that. But notice if you melt that paiji or melt that bangle, you can make it into anything. That is one understanding. Why? Because gold is constant. Gold has to be there. Now realize this. Understand your question and answer. None of these forms will be there if gold did not exist. None of us will perceive unless consciousness is there. You have to understand it. You have to become aware of it. When you know, it is like the Alfonso Mango example. You know it. You just smile. A child or an American may not know. They say, what is this? What is this? You know it's an Alfonso Mango. So you just smile. You know what is it. So you know now. So what does a Paramahamsa do? Another example. Now, two examples from the gold. Gold is not bothered whether it is paije or tiara or necklace or just piece of gold. Gold is not attached. But the paije is attached. And paije cannot sustain without the gold. Second understanding. The third understanding the gold can continue to be just gold or form anything. Gold is not attached like the TV screen. TV screen is not attached. If we detach everything, hmm? if we detached from wife, uh, from husband, from kids, uh, from any of the desire, 
then we have a only purpose to live with god then what is that then only purpose with uh, to live for live for god right no what is that man she say become detached from everybody by husband children like yes we are only attached to the live for the god okay very good question and this is what vivekananda answered that those who plunge into the vanities of samsara and put their head long etc you too have missed the boat so then we will miss the boat too so what should you do now he said neither the cave not the samsara but you defy divinize your life you be in the samsara play the role of the mother wife daughter son whatever we are playing but every time like the two thing i know i am not this body not the mind i am the brahman but i act like a boy better wife than other wife why because i am detached and yet i play the role 100% like the actors but i am not showing i'm acting that is artificial i'm playing genuine but why because i know inside of inside a very good example would be waves all of us are waves and if i become calm and quiet half it through realization what will happen i'll become i join the ocean i become the ocean that time my wave form is not there meaning it is you cannot discriminate this was robin gosh wave now wave is calm ocean it is become ocean even i am very happy i become vast wave no without the saying no neither the ocean neither the wave can sustain without the water you are the water neither one of us can sustain without the consciousness of the the supreme how do i apply it in the question to yours look at paramahamsa what happens when they become paramahamsa do they vanish into the poof into the air now i become paramahamsa no they continue to live in the family paramahamsa ramakrishna or yogananda or ramana maharshi or jesus christ what did they do they continue to live just like a normal human being but knew all along i am the wave paramahamsa wave but i am not separate from any one of the wave because we are all one water we are all one consciousness so now when your mother in law fights with you husband fights with you wife fights with you what do you do don't find fault in them and elevate them along with yourself in bengali paramahamsa ramakrishna explains it very beautifully he says j shoy she roy you know what it means the one who tolerates will sustain through the life look at practical example tsunami came to india in sao it went over uprooted even the temple right <laughs> but there was a bamboo tree there the bamboo grew bent down tsunami wave went over it when the wave began bamboo stood again stood up j shoy she roy do who tolerate so what do you have to do tolerance what is jesus christ saying forgiveness is the supreme spirituality you understand the god is in uh, he goes on to say in his sermon on the mount if you want peace my child accept others will let others will be done whatever they are wanting let it be done i'll help you it may not tack agree with me what does that mean is my mind but if i am consciousness who is playing that that is also consciousness play that mind is wanting it it's okay what do i get i don't lose anything another example lotus in the pond it is in that samsara earthy dirty water mud no and tadpoles are floating around but <laughs> it is not attached it is the lotus dirt water cannot soil its leaves that pulls a roaming around around the bus and somebody asked this question to ramana maharshi sir i don't want to go back came from australia those days in a ship take 30 odd days to come i don't want to go back and he was a great surgeon ramana maharshi says don't be like the tad pulls below the lotus meaning around him there were people around in that ashrama he said don't be like the tad pull you be like the honey bee they come from miles away sip the nectar go back you take that nectar which is what is within 
we'll deal more with it. Uh, there was a beautiful inquiry called the self inquiry, which is what we are talking about, and Shayam Atman Chatushta. Swayam Atman Chatushta. I am that form. And eventually, actually, I am the consciousness, Chetana.